Um, so the, our next speaker is Prashant Giri. Um, we'll talk about Tregs um, from, from Dr. Rashida Begum's, uh, Begum's lab in India, um, talking about calcium and fat signaling and uh, the decreased suppressive capacity of Tregs in vitiligo. Thanks, Prashant. Greetings, everyone. I am Prashant Giri, currently pursuing my PhD under the guidance of Dr. Mitesh Divedi, and today I will present our current research entitled Altered Calcium and FAT Signaling Pathway may be responsible for decreased suppressive capacity of T-Rex in generalized vitiligo patients. The authors of the current study declare there are no conflict of interest. Generalized vitiligo is a skin depigmenting disease characterized by autoimmune loss of functional melanocytes. Although the exact etiology is unknown, studies have highlighted the role of cytotoxic T cells in vitiligo pathogenesis. Interestingly, as shown in this figure, our recent study highlighted reduced NFATs and FOXP3 leads to reduced T-Rex suppressive capacity, which results in generalized vitiligo pathogenesis. Although we observed the role of NFATs in generalized vitiligo pathogenesis, however, the exact role of NFAT signaling pathway in generalized vitiligo pathogenesis is unclear. Therefore, our current study aimed to assess calcium calcineurin NFAT signaling pathway in 52 generalized vitiligo patients and 50 controls. The objectives of the current study were to assess plasma calcium and intracellular T-REC calcium in generalized vitiligo patients. Next, to assess the effect of calcium influx in T-REX on NFAT C1 DNA binding activity, GSK3 beta activity, calcineurin activity, and calcineurin and calmodulin mRNA expression in T-REX. Moreover, to determine the effect of calcium treatment on calcium ion channel genes, and finally, to study the effect of calcium treatment on T-Rex suppressive function in vitro. The methodology performed in the current study are listed below. Next, the demographic details of generalized vitiligo patients and controls are mentioned here. To assess the role of calcium homeostasis in generalized vitiligo, we studied plasma calcium, intracellular T-Rex calcium, and ORI1 calcium ion channel gene in generalized vitiligo patients. Interestingly, our study found significantly reduced plasma calcium, intracellular T-Rex calcium, and ORI1 mRNA expression levels in generalized vitiligo, active vitiligo, and severe vitiligo patients, suggesting the role of calcium homeostasis in generalized vitiligo pathogenesis, disease activity, and severity. Furthermore, we found calcium treatment improved calcium homeostasis in T-Rex as it led to enhanced ORI1 mRNA levels and intracellular T-Rex calcium influx. As altered calcium homeostasis may lead to impaired calcineurin and NFATC1 activity, we studied the impact of calcium treatment on calcineurin and NFATC1 activity. Moreover, we also studied the impact of calcium treatment on calcineurin and calmodulin mRNA expression in generalized vitiligo patients. Interestingly, our study revealed significantly reduced calcineurin and NFATC1 activity, calmodulin and calcineurin mRNA expression in generalized vitiligo, active vitiligo and severe vitiligo patients, suggesting the crucial role of NFAT signaling pathway in generalized vitiligo pathogenesis, activity and severity. Interestingly, the in vitro calcium treatment of T-Rex enhanced calcineurin activity which in turn increased NFAT C1 DNA binding activity suggesting the therapeutic potential of calcium calcineurin NFAT C1 pathway in generalized vitiligo. As GSK3 beta is a negative regulator of NFAT signaling pathway, we studied GSK3 beta activity and mRNA expression in generalized vitiligo. Interestingly, we found significantly increased GSK3 beta activity in generalized vitiligo patients, which suggests it may have a role in decreased NFAT C1 activity in generalized vitiligo patients. Further, to assess the effect of calcium mediated NFAT C1 activation on T Rex suppressive capacity, we carried out in vitro T Rex suppression assay. Interestingly, our study revealed calcium treatment enhanced the production of immunosuppressive cytokines like IL-10 and TGF-beta by T-Rex. Moreover, 
it also increased the Treg mediated suppression of CD8 and CD4 T cell proliferation. And finally, it also suppressed alpha and gamma production by CD8 and CD4 plus T cells. Further, to study the mechanism of Treg suppressive capacity, we carried out correlation analysis. The results suggested that the intracellular Treg calcium influx is positively correlated with NFT signaling pathway. This suggests that the increase in the calcium upon calcium treatment might lead to increased calcineurin and NFT C1 activity, which might contribute to enhanced Treg suppressive capacity. Finally, I would like to summarize our findings with the following figure. Overall, our study suggests the altered calcium homeostasis leads to impaired NFT signaling pathway resulting in non-functional T-Rex which might contribute to generalized vitiligo pathogenesis. However, upon calcium treatment, it improves calcium homeostasis in T-Rex which leads to enhanced calcium calcineurin NFT signaling pathway resulting in increased T-Rex mediated suppression of CD8 and CD4 T-cells which might lead to melanocyte survival. In conclusion, our study highlighted the role of calcium NFT signaling pathway in generalized vitiligo. Moreover, our study highlighted the role of calcium on calcineurin and NFT C1 activation, which suggests that improving the calcium uptake in T-Rex of generalized vitiligo patient may serve as a potent therapeutic option for generalized vitiligo. However, further in vivo animal model studies assessing the role of calcium NFT signaling pathway are warranted. I would like to thank all the vitiligo patients and healthy individuals for participating in the study. I would also like to thank my guide Dr. Mitesh Diveli for constant support and help. I would like to thank VIS for giving me an opportunity to give an oral presentation. Thank you. Thank you Prashant. Uh, I, I had mentioned that uh, this was from Dr. Begum's group but is in fact Mitesh Duvidi's lab. Um, so that's great, it's great it's to hear. Mitesh has been doing research in Tregs and vitiligo for a very long time. Um, so, so great talk. Um, I don't see any other questions right now. I've got a list of my own, but I'm going to have to limit myself because we don't have too much time. Um, but do you do you think that this is uh, a genetic effect uh, in in vitiligo Tregs? Is why are they defective? Why are this, they dysfunctional to start with? Uh, you mean uh, the uh, defective calcium uptake or yes. Uh, defective T-regs. Uh, uh, it could be genetic. Uh, actually, uh, what we found is uh, we found reduced ORI1 calcium ion channel gene. We also looked for other calcium ion channel genes, but we couldn't find any significant difference. There may be some genetic defects, but we haven't looked for it so far. And apart from that, uh, there can be other epigenetic factors also which could be responsible for reduced calcium uptake in regulatory T-cells. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Rosalie Luton asked uh, if you looked at the effect of calcium on cytotoxic T-cells as well. All T-cells need uh, calcium flux, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Types? yeah, yeah. No, no, we, do, we did not look for cytotoxic T-cells. Our study was focused on regulatory T-cells, but it's an interesting uh, thing we, we should look for in CD8 T-cells as, as well. There were a lot of bars in those graphs, which means you did a lot of pipetting <laughs> and good tight error bars. So uh, well done. Thank you for that study. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, 